Hey guys, welcome to part two of my carport renovation. Today I'm rebuilding the screened in porch using recycled aluminum beams. Okay, next step in our process for the screened in porch is to reframe and basically prep. So we have to get rid of all the old screening. Okay. And we're gonna show you um, how to remove this stuff first of all. But then we're gonna go through the prep process because I'm gonna save all of this aluminum. And I'm gonna add another bar through the middle so that we can rescreen this thing. Here we go. For getting rid of it, nice. Just throw the knife in there, cut the spline. Okay, and when you're gonna go pry it out, close the blade up so that nothing breaks off in your eyes. All right, there we go. That's it. Now our job is to remove the spline. You know what? And I'm gonna save a piece of this because I was in the store the other day and they had three or four different thicknesses. So this extrusion is uh, sensitive, but the material in the store didn't have anything listed as to how thick the spline needed to be. This had four options laying there. So I'm gonna go shopping with this and make sure I pick up the right one. All right, the rest of this, however, is gonna be garbage. Okay, whoa. And if you're lucky, it's that easy. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get that. Ah, I don't, that one's gonna fight. Let's have a look here. There we go, we got it. There we are. This is amazing. Rescreening is actually gonna be really simple. Can't wait to show you how simple this is. Because once you've got a knife and the screening tool, anybody can rescreen a porch at home by themselves. You don't have to call a pro for this. This is definitely a DIY project. No worries. Uh, here we go. Uh, so if you're like most people, A, you can't afford a contractor, or B, contractors don't want to waste their time with you. And if you do find a contractor, you're going to find one of these guys who has a system, and that's all they do, okay? Like for bathrooms, there's a company we contacted, won't say their name, advertising everywhere, a free install special. Installation service is free, but we'll renovate your bathroom. So they're going to rip out your bathroom, but put everything back in, Plastic, 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 prefab, walk out the door. It's gonna cost you eight to 10,000 bucks. To redo a bathroom should only cost about 3,000 material. So, if they're giving you a free install and the material's three grand, why are they still charging 8,000 bucks? If that's the environment we're in, all I know is there are hundreds of thousands of homes in North America built between 1930 and now that are still in original condition. If you don't believe me, jump onto Zillow and check it out. All these houses that are for sale, and if all of the houses that are out there need to be remodeled and no one's doing the work, those houses are just gonna sit there and rot. And then we, we, we're gonna really have a housing problem. Or you're gonna have to learn how to just adapt your lifestyle to living in someone else's trash. So, if you don't wanna live in someone else's trash can, learn how to do things yourself. Buy one of these houses cheap and remodel the darn thing before you move in. Uh, everything you need to learn is right here on this channel. Cheers. So the plan is simple. We're taking the extrusions that we salvaged from the original system here, and we're going to just, well, we're gonna use them again. We're gonna take them, sand them down, uh, grind them, putty them, whatever we gotta do to get them back to good condition. And then we're gonna cut them and reinstate them like a mid wall here, okay? So I've grabbed enough pieces here to do this section. I've got a couple more pieces for this section. Yeah, we're gonna just go through that process now because I hate throwing things out when they're perfectly good. There's not too many opportunities on a job site where you can reuse material. And you might think, oh, well these extrusions are only like $35 for a piece. You know, that's still a lot of money. I need, uh, I need eight of them. So a can of paint cost me 15 bucks and a sanding sponge. I think that's a better investment. A little bit of time goes a long way. Yeah, this one's a lot longer. A lot longer than it needs to be. Okay. Well, we're gonna use this end. <laughs> and then this one's longer than it needs to be. So I'm gonna use this end. You know, for the purpose of keeping my life simple, I might even just cut it down before I paint. You 
You know, sometimes it might make sense to put everything in brand new. End of the day, you gotta consider the housing market, where you live, the value of your property, and what you're trying to get out of it. In this case, it's just a secondary living space to enjoy the fresh air when it's nice outside. The housing values around here are about $100,000. So you gotta be careful. It doesn't take a lot of time before you overinvest in a project like this. When I sat down and started doing the, mar the, the budget on this, I ended up with a $50,000 program because I'm used to like a two or $300,000 house. So I had to dial everything back to try to stay within my 20. <laughs> this is one of the ways we're doing that. Okay, there we go. I think I'm ready to roll here. Yep, now I need a piece about 54 inches. And this one suffered tragic damage when the golf cart went through the front of it. So we're gonna cut it off and just salvage as much as I can. Now, 54 in this one as well. Oh, good. All right, now we got our pieces. Uh, I'm gonna fix up my grinder so that, so I'm gonna grind down my holes and then I'm gonna get them filled. That way we have a surface that we can paint. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my blade the ceramic blade is great for vinyl and metal sheet goods, but for thicker aluminum, you're gonna find that it gets too hot and it melts the pieces on the wheel, and then it's no good anymore. So, change the blade, make sure you're unplugged, obviously. Take the tool that comes with it, stick it in the two holes, counterclockwise. Boom and boom. Grinder blades are universal. So if you have a four inch tool, a four inch or four and a half inch blade will work. If it's a five inch tool, get a five inch blade. All right, there we go. Good to go. It is good for metal and stainless, yay. So it'll handle this no problem. I'm gonna just grind the surface. Really the secret is this, fillers, like caulking, don't work on raised surfaces. You have to have a bowl or something smooth. So you just gotta grind this flat before this is useful again. So, so far I've invested 10 minutes and a $6 blade and I've saved myself almost 300 bucks. <laughs> We're gonna grab some crud killer. I have no idea what this is. I'm new in the neighborhood. But, uh, wow, that's hard to open. Four different varieties of crud killer on this shelf at the store I was at today. All right, here we go. Wow, there's nothing on this for corrosive or anything, I don't have to wear gloves. But you know, don't be stupid. Everybody's got different levels of irritability with their skin and their eyes, so be careful if it bothers you. Um, after all of my years in the trades, I'm bulletproof now, so I don't care. Dunkaroo. Okay. And I am just basically doing a quick surface clean, okay? I'm gonna be painting this with an oil-based paint. And we saw earlier in the video, we used the, um, the the spray, and that worked great, but that's $10, I can. I'm only gonna get a couple of posts for that. So I thought, you know what? I gotta get a cleaner out here anyway so I can mix it up, so I can clean my siding. I might as well get these things washed down and use a roll-on paint, just so that we can show you the, op the other alternatives because whenever you're rolling paint, it's a lot cheaper. 
like dramatically. I think I'm gonna save 100 bucks. Now it's more inconvenient because this stuff is gonna take 24 hours to dry. So you gotta have a place to put an oil paint that you can let dry for 24 hours. As long as you got that, you can save a ton of money. I think what I'm gonna do is set up a garden hose and just rinse all this off. Seems like a fair amount of dirt on this stuff. Man, the crud killer seems to work, Matt. Now, if you're asking me, hey, Jeff, why didn't you grind down all these little holes at the end? It's like, because I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to cut these to size and then add brackets to attach them anyway. So, yeah, there's a certain amount of sludge involved with this, eh? It only has one spray kind of nozzle, eh? All right. Try not to hose down our cameraman. Now, you're gonna see there's a bunch of these little clips and stuff. Some of them are installed with um, Phillips screws and some of them are installed with flathead screws. They're all rusted out. Um, you know how much I love Phillips screws. <laughs> so, uh, I'm just gonna use my grinder. Now, this leads me to think, I did a video what, two years ago? And I talked about the five power tools every homeowner should own, right? Chop saw, you can change blades and do it, cut anything. Grinder, you can change blades and cut and grind and sand anything. It's on the list. Go check out that video, because it doesn't matter what you're facing. If you've got those five tools, you can get an attachment or a blade and solve every problem you have, except for not being plugged in. This should work. There we go. That was some great TV there. Okay, now we're just gonna wash down the rest of this so that it's prepped up for tomorrow. I'm gonna paint the rest of the uh, trim today, and then hopefully at the end of the day, I'll be able to paint the rest of this trim. Just have to wait till everything is dry, but in, out here in the shade, it might take a couple hours. <laughs> wow, look at that crud on the ceiling. So in the interest of saving time, guys, what I'm doing is I've still got this damage that I've gotta repair, the holes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a one coat with the Rust-Oleum enamel paint. It's oil based and it takes 24 hours to dry. There's no quick way around it. That's how you do it cheap. If you want to be quick, like I said, use the spray, 10 bucks a can. I'd probably need five cans, right? But then at least it dries in 15 minutes. Uh, I'm going to do it backwards. I'm going to use the roll on. This is all about a budget on this job. And then when I'm done, I'm going to fill all my little gaps with this right here. It's a 20 minute drying caulking that's paintable. And then after that, I'll come by and I'll spot check all of the, my little repairs with this leftover of the can that I did the post with. All right, piece of cake. Um, and then we should have a nice white ready to screen surface for tomorrow and we'll finish the screening as well. The process is this. I'm using this long wand mini roller. Try to stay away from this paint when you're working as much as you can. Open the can with my knife. Now, it says that on the can you should be mixing this thoroughly. So here's the product. I just opened the can, didn't even mix it. Okay, so they're telling us we need to mix this. I'm just using a little bit of the old floor trimming from inside. Wow, okay, so it's, it's not like it's separated. It's just really thick and chunky in the bottom. All right, here we go. We're gonna pour this out. I'm gonna save a little bit as a cutting can. Three inch brush. It's too wide to, to use with this. It'll drive you crazy. All right, so here's a cheat. If your brush is too big, then just cut it down. This is a disposable brush because once we get an oil-based primer, or oil-based paint on here, I'm not cleaning this up. All right, so just take your knife and take a good half inch to an inch off. Turn this into a two inch brush. Two inch brushes are designed to go use in those cans. Okay, and if it's a disposable situation, that is gonna work perfect every time. All right, here we go. Then we got our brush cut down. Fits in the can really well. When you're painting, the rule is simple. It's less is more. The thing about this is, it's gonna need two coats. There's just no way around it. 
Well, honestly, I think I like the way the mini roller goes on a little bit faster with these flat surfaces. So we're just gonna cut all of the inside corners and up against the ceiling and roll the rest of this. Obviously, even if I wanted to spray, I can't spray today. It is way too windy. I would get oil spray everywhere. Not bad for first coat. <sighs> I really hope this dries up in a couple hours so I can get the next coat on by before the end of the day. So we're back today, we're gonna to be taking off our downspouts. Now remember, these are all aluminum. So every one of these, this is a joint, this is a joint, that's a piece, another joint at the bottom. You total all that up, all right, you're about 50 to $60 worth of material. What we're gonna use is a half can of spray paint, five bucks. We're gonna be able to salvage this and reinstall it. But I gotta get rid of it for now so that I can get all the details and install the screen. So, yeah, let me just reach over here. And that is completely rusted out. And that one worked. Okay, all right. So when the screw gets rounded out, it rusts to the point where as soon as you put the bit on it, it just goes to a circle. Now we got no choice but to try to get in here with a pair of pliers and get this loosened off. All right. And if that isn't gonna work, uh, we'll get one more try here. Nope, if that doesn't work, the only option we have is to grab the grinder and cut the head of that screw right clean off. It's not going to interfere with anything. There we go, good as new. Now we're going to go down to the bottom. Okay. Here we go. Now, if you've never seen this before, I think almost every eaves trough in the whole world is installed like this. There's a thin little metal band here that holds it all together. And that is attached to the wall. So, two screws at the top, two screws at the bottom, boom, instant release. That is just crazy how well that works. Now, remember our design, we've got a um, screen that comes four feet by 100, it's ridiculous. What we're gonna do is we're gonna split this in the middle so there's another bar, just for safety, really. You know, if you're gonna have a party out here and things get a little out of hand and someone falls over, it's nice to have a bar to run into so they don't fall right through your whole screen. Uh, we'll just measure the entire height. We're gonna split it in half for aesthetics. 77, let's keep this simple. 35 and three is 38. That's plenty, right? Because if it's four feet wide, we wanna make sure that when we're attaching our screen and spline, we've got a little overhang. We're gonna go 38 just to keep our number simple. And we're gonna be installing the extrusion with a bracket like this, okay, on the underside, okay? So when I mark my 38, I'm gonna put it right at the line. This is gonna cover the black mark and the extrusion will sit above it. So don't freak out that I'm using a black marker on white. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. That's for the camera. 38. There we are. We'll just put a little mark right there. Okay. That way we can avoid the need for levels. We'll just mark 38 all the way across. There we go. Bam. Now, we're going to use these. Put that right on my mark. And this is actually going to carry the weight of that extrusion 
until I can screw it on. It's like having a third pair of hands, right? All right. Now, we're going to get our measurement across. I'll come over from left to right here for you. And we want to be exact. We want to make this as exact as we can so that when we install it, we're pushing the extrusion out of the way to set that in, not scratching the paint up. It might be dry, but curing is another issue. 52 and an eighth. Okay. So, let's grab one of these bad boys. 52 and an eighth. Make sure the end is square. I'm gonna measure off of here. <sighs> All right. Just a little bit of a pencil mark. A couple of two by four scraps. It's the same thickness as the table. That makes sure I cut square, okay? Yeah. Here's a little tip for you. When you wanna be exact, you wanna make your mark on your material where the blade's gonna contact first. Having a mark at the back, if you're used to your tools, it's not a big deal, but if you're new to DIY, now you can set your blade and see that I'm actually cutting a little bit long. And that is perfect. Now we're gonna come over here. We're gonna dry fit. Just a little bit of pushing on this allowed me to get it in without any issue. There we go. Wow, that is pretty awesome. And we're gonna throw a level on here just to be sure because they might not have put the bottom in level, but we are in good shape. Beautiful. And you'll notice if I leave this clamp here for just a minute, I can actually measure the next piece and it'll be perfectly seamless right here. No issues. Now, you could measure and install your brackets but that's a commitment until you've had a chance to get the bar in there and put a level on it. Self-tapping screws. Make sure nothing that's moving is up against any of the metal so it doesn't make a mark. Beautiful. And then we just have to make sure that this rail is perfectly flush front and back before we screw up. Perfect every time. So before I put the next bracket on, I am going to measure and cut and install this piece. Wow, this is really fascinating. All these measurements are different. This one's out two inches. This one's 54 and an eighth and a hair, which is good to know because we're trying to be exact here. Just for a point of reference, when I'm cutting, I like to pull the material away from the blade before I lift. Let the blade stop spinning. Um, the side of the blade here, okay, this is smooth, but the teeth itself, they are extended on each side. So if you cut something flush, okay, now you're up against the blade only. And as you're lifting it, those teeth are grabbing and they can throw a small piece in the air and it can be dangerous. So, be smart. What was my measurement? 38, right? Okay, here we go. Again, 38 was our number, I do believe. I always double check, yep. Okay, here we go, there's my mark. Here's my bumper pad right on that mark. Locking and loading here. A Little bit low. Okay, here's my rail. And then we're gonna come over here we're going to push and set. Again, trying not to scratch any of the paint. Beautiful. Set at the same height. Now, this is where you got to use your eyeballs. Okay. If it isn't lined up perfect, make it perfect. Remember, no one's using a tool to check to see if it's level. They're using their eyeballs. So you have to take a minute, step back and have a look and go, yeah, that looks right. If it doesn't look right to you, I don't care what the tool says, it's not right. Now we've got that in place. We can install the other brackets. Okay. Be careful not to have the bracket sticking out and grabbing the extra the screen when you're done, right? 
It'll just wear right through that screen. This kind of construction, I'll tell you, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it reminds me like a kid working with Lego. It's so simple, right? All right, uh, next. Again, measure. Let's get the next measurement, next cut. 53 and 7 eighths. Nice. Weird. You know, I cut that, right? Oh. That's, that's not good. I measured on the short side of that angle. This was an angle piece. I almost got burned on that. All right. Okay. Now, same process. We're looking for level over here. We're all a little bit low. Okay. And because I cut this all really tight, it doesn't need any more support than this. Except. Interesting. Okay, we're gonna start over here with the first bracket and then we'll come back to the middle. Alrighty, how about we keep this from falling over this time, eh? That's my level mark. Alright, now, I like that one there. So what I'm gonna do is just make a little mark right here. That's not gonna be an issue. Now, I wanna make sure that my bracket is going right where that pencil mark is. Here we go. Okay. Now we can screw on the top. Make it flush, front to back. And we're all attached. Yes. All right. Time to bust out the screen. Okay. Uh, so for putting in screens specifically to Florida, okay, everybody down in Florida, you know you got those no see -ums. That's literally the name of the bug. I don't know who came up with it, but it's on the packaging right here. I got the screen for it right here. No see -um screen. Now that does not mean privacy. <laughs> that means there's a tiny little bug that bites that comes out at night. And if you live down here, you know this, you got to get the screen with a small enough hole to keep them out. So, <laughs> for everybody else, yeah, hit the comment section. Tell me if you got any crazy critters or weird names for bugs in the area where you live. Love to share that information. And tell me how small the screen has got to be, or if even using a screen is a viable option. But uh, if you can keep the no see out, you can keep anything out. All right? Um, I did take a piece of the spline from the original screen from this extrusion and measured off to be this size, okay? Now there are three sizes at the Home Depot. Um, 0 0.14, 0 0.12. Those are more for like door screens and window screens, okay? This sucker here is monster thick, all right? So, make sure you buy the right spline. You're gonna be incredibly disappointed with your results. If you're not sure, ask somebody who works there. Good luck with that. <laughs> all right, now, so we're gonna need some of this. We're gonna need some of this, and then we're gonna need this, okay? This is the screen tool. That's just a flat wheel, okay? And that's, that's, that's fine. I like to work with this one. This one has um, almost like a pulley wheel, okay? So it can sit on a rail. This one pushes in the spline and both sides, and I really enjoy working with that side. Um, you do have to be careful when you're using this though because the edge of this can actually be kind of sharp. And if you push too hard, you can cut through the screen, all right? So, you gotta be careful, and we're gonna demonstrate how to use the tool in just a minute. But first, I need a measurement. Uh, the screen here is 54, whatever. We're just gonna go with five feet. Because I'm free cutting it by hand, I wanna give myself a little extra dimension, so I always have overhang. And like I said, we're four feet wide on that roll, so we aren't gonna have any issue. We're gonna have lots of overhang. So we'll cut three pieces at five feet. We'll stick all those in, so you get an idea how this goes together. Five feet on the edge of the concrete. This is all about production at this point. Now that's really hard on the blade. Wow. <laughs> we'll try that again. 
that is some tough screen. Woo! Now we got that, we're good to go. I'm going to uh, recommend get a few pieces of the spline, okay? They're going to be used just to get things started. You know, eight inches each. This will help you to uh, lock everything in as we're going, okay? Here we are. Now, let's just do one. We'll get comfortable with this mess. Just to create some comfort factor, we're going to start not on the ladder. My first piece of spline. Obviously, I'm going in this track here. I'm going to go with a couple inches of overhang. I'm going to measure right up to the top of this, this board here. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of thumbtack here. Okay. Get the right piece on. There we go. Squish that in. Now this is temporary. Okay, and I made this plenty long. Now, you'll see what happens. As soon as you put it in the spline and you press it in, it, it tightens everything up because you're shortening the distance by extending across and then in instead of just across, right? All right, so the next step is cut your spline in advance so that it's a little longer than what you need, okay? And here we are. Oh, we're fighting with the wind now too. That's great. That's just great. Now, we're going to do the entire top and that's fine now. Uh, don't have to worry about putting pressure on this one. Just nice and slow. Try to run it down the middle of the spline. You don't want to go one side or the other. You'll risk cutting the screen. This is not a race. This is about perfection. Something this simple. You have to take your time. Right till we get to the end. Here, you want to just cut a little bit shy on purpose. But, okay, make a mark. Pull it out and get away from the screen. There we go. Get your tool, finish that off. Okay, that's pretty simple, eh? All right. Now, we're going to do the same with the bottom so that we can create that tension all the way across. Then we can get rid of our temporary pieces and do the sides. do best angle. Let's trim the top. I want to set this knife just on top of the spline. Okay. Um, I'll demonstrate in the empty groove. Okay. Okay. We're going to put it on top of the spline on an angle. So I'm cutting against the metal. Okay. And you get a nice clean cut. Make sense? A little bit of surgery here. And then, here we go. We are. Use the spline as your cutting edge, and you won't have any excess sticking out. That is how you make it look perfect every time. Now is a great time to take your tool again. Just double check that everything is in there as tight as it can be. Before you walk away, make sure it's absolutely perfect. We're back up closing the last section of the wall, guys. This is going to be exciting. It's also a little messed up. You can see that this header here, which is carrying load from these two major posts, uh, it's, it's installed way off center here, off Cricket. So I got to build a wall underneath it. There's no way to go around it because I'm using this extrusion for my screen. 
So we're going to have it come to here, minor adjustment, and then go work our way over here again. We got to work with what you got, right? I'm not tearing apart all of this on this kind of a, a value versus proposition of labor kind of scenario. I'm not starting from scratch. We're just going to be repairing and moving forward and trying to get a, what we will call it, an adequate or an acceptable result based on the neighborhood and the market conditions that we're working on here, okay? Now, the slab is wonky. All right, that's fine. The aluminum will bend when I put my Tapcons in. I do have to do a little bit of beefing out. I don't have an extrusion on this side, so I have to add a post here. And then I'm gonna put in the center post, and then we're gonna just mimic what we have over here. Another post here and here, and I got a roll of the white aluminum to go across the front here, okay? And it comes with these lovely little C channels, all right? So we're going to miter cut that, dress it up, and then screw that on as well. It's called a kick plate down here. So if you go to one of those stores that specialize in mobile home materials, you can go in and ask for kick plate. They'll cut it to measure for you. So bring your number exact, and then they'll give you the, uh, the little C channel there as well. That gives it a lot of rigidity and something you can screw to and we're going to be good. So that will also cover all those sharp edges, right, which is important. So when you're working and installing, doing your caulking work, you don't slice your fingers open. That's why we use it, okay? It's a safety thing more than anything else. So I'm just going to cut and measure and install, use the L brackets, use the screws. We'll get the, we'll spend some time talking about putting that skirt on, okay, the kick plate, and we'll finish screening this up. And then all I got left to do to finish all this is a couple of pieces of my little trim and put on that door handle and this project is finished. Woo! I kind of like the idea of having a gap here. When I'm all said and done, we have another video coming up. We're gonna be tearing up all this lawn here and we're gonna be putting in a French drain and then some decorative white stone right out to the front. That gives us the ability to move water during times when you get heavy rainfall, because it does happen. It's only a few times a year, but when it happens, it happens. And we'd rather not have all that water in this lanai. So, we're going to do that and it'll give me an opportunity so that I can have a squeegee. If I do get water from the heavy wind and rain, I can just squeegee it over this corner and drain it out the side. That is my plan. Wow, I have to have a post here no matter what because of the design. Here we go. Yeah, all right, 92 and three quarters. Let's do the two posts and then we'll just put this in after the fact and we'll cut the measure to fit. So, this is one of our salvaged repainted pieces, 92 and 7 eighths. Uh, my kick plate is 16 inches, so we'll just lay that up there, lay that in there. We're going to install that right there. We're going to keep the offset and we're going to go from level. So let's just go through this. We're gonna pre-drill in a few locations. All right, just to get uh, best results. We're going to be using these monsters. These are three inch screw. This will hold these posts together. No difficulty at all. And let's establish our offset. It looks like about three quarters of an inch. Yeah, right there. Loving it. All right, that's done. Now we need one for the other side. All these bits that fit inside of a impact drill like this, the same size that goes into the impact goes into the bit extension. These tiny little bits that come in the case, they all have the same base size, okay? So they're extremely interchangeable, which makes life really simple. 
Uh, let's find out what her hole is. We're gonna put another vertical support right down the middle. 93, 45, 46 and a half. 46 and a half. That's the center. All right, we're gonna use this as our mark. That's my center, okay? And I'm just gonna slide this on, attach my bracket, and then I'll measure and cut my main support post. Perfect. All righty. Ah, because it's so bright out here, I'm gonna have a hard time using a laser level today. I'm just gonna go check this wall here. That's pretty darn close to perfect. I think I'm just gonna measure off. How about this one? Yeah, it's close. Okay, so 45 and a half. I'm gonna put another L bracket at 45 and a half so I can just set my post into it. You gotta love building like this. You got so much ability to be creative with the, your process is not even funny. Top down, inside out, it all goes together. At the end of the day, these brackets and the entire structure. Now we just gotta cut something to fit the gap. Uh, 16 ends up being 16 and a half. 17 plus extrusion. Let's get the measurement 17 and a half. We're setting our extrusion 17 and a half inches above the ground. But the ground has movement. It's also a lot of mercy here with this because it's a two inch piece. It's 16 plus a trim, 16 and a half ish, give or take, coming or going. All right, we'll go 17 here. And then we're going to put it in level after that. 17 or 17 and a half? I already don't like what I'm doing. 17 and a half, okay. Well, that's different. Okay. Oh, if you don't like what you're doing, stop and fix it. Don't keep moving forward if your little alarm is going off. Okay. Now I can get all my hands working again. This is another great system for installing things. Having a cutoff, using it as a spacer, marking a line. Getting these brackets installed before you cut your piece. Nothing wrong with this. I know previously I used clamps, but this works pretty darn good too. All right, now we'll cut this piece exactly 45 and 5 eighths in a bit. <laughs> All right. Forty-five, five eighths in a bit. Forty-five, five eighths in a bit. Put that in place. Set the blade on it. Once I'm happy with it, I'll hold it against the fence. Here we go. Hey, loving it. It's going the wrong way. That's going to be in there really nice. That allows me to uh, hold it in place while I install the bracket. simplicity we are going to cut the piece for the bottom we're gonna we're gonna actually install it onto the skirt and then place it in so we want to get all these pieces cut first oh my god 97 okay 
it's been a long day and I don't remember how long I asked Matt to have them cut this thing. I like to think I know how to use a measuring tape. But in lieu of today's constant screw ups, I had the same thing as last time. Yeah? Lee, did you know that? I've done something horribly wrong and I can't tell. I might have measured something upside down backwards, I think. Yep. I'm an idiot. I'm going to double check this before I go and install everything else. 97, eh? This looks like around 8 feet, so that might be, might be right. Well, there's no way in hell they cut this the right length. <laughs> I mean, I did ask them to uh, cut it for the, the measurement that I gave them from the inside. They're at least 8 inches over, so so much for getting an exact measurement when you go to the store. We're going to take off a little bit of mercy on each side for the trim. Now I got to cut this. That's just lovely. Okay, here we go. This is uh, cut to fit now. And the little bit of C trap, C channel that I was talking about. The secret to cutting that is miter the joints, right? Like look how pretty that is. And cut them about a quarter inch longer on each side because you'll never get it perfectly hammered down. Now it's just a matter of grabbing some of these screws and fixing it in place. Like I said, I'm going to seal it with an exterior caulking anyway. Now when you're putting on the screws, always screw through the C-channel. You kill two birds with one stone that way. Uh, we're going to recommend every 16 inches. <laughs> 